this whole thing where they happen for Nigeria, they affect you at all? Yes, ma'am. They affect me because things is not there as before. Uh, my youtube channel if you're seeing me for the first time welcome to another video you guys today i'm on the streets i've decided to come out and do this video so i'm just going to talk to random people on the streets you guys know the situation in nigeria right now so we want to get the heart felt situation from the people so let's talk to people on the street all right so how good, are morning, you guys? Ma good morning ma'am good morning ma'am i love your hair oh thank you i love it i love your glasses thank your makeup you. everything everything and the way you're smiling it's like the country is not it's not affecting you are you a part of this country i am actually i'm a nigerian and a proud one at that fantastic yes i'm smiling because it's a mindset thing you know mm -hmm. life is about my mi mindset what yeah. you make out of it mm -hmm. it's not as if um i'm not living here or i have another planet away from where others live it's just yeah. a mindset thing i choose to be happy wow That's I'm, I'm so so happy to hear this one positive speech this morning super excited to hear this so i want to ask you um realistically you know i know that we're all positive and want to be positive about it but if you were to pick what would be the hardest thing about living in nigeria all right um you know that uh, our lives in nigeria revolve around this fuel and so governments have been subsidizing all this while mm -hmm. all right and then we've not felt the impact and now the subsidy has been removed without any um any 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 idea of cushioning the effect mm. of the removal of the full subsidy mm. so now in nigeria life is uh, very tough especially when it comes to transportation and before you know it the food food items will uh, be a hike and there is something about nigeria i've come to see that is steady when anything goes up it doesn't come down mm. it becomes very difficult for it to come down mm -hmm. so people are packing their vehicles they take public transport and it's not even easy with the uh, commuters because they have to also buy fuel i like the fact that the subsidy is removed but the fact i don't like is that there's nothing to cushion the effect mm -hmm. and i had this a palliative who and who will get it mm -hmm. 2020 we had about palliative i didn't get any and i'm in nigeria and a proud one at that mm -hmm. i know what i have contributed to this nation mm -hmm. in building this nation in my own little corner i didn't get anything mm -hmm. you get what i mean if you were to give a message one message to the government if they are watching us please look at the camera and all give right. that message all right the only message i will give is that i'm not against the removal of fuel subsidy but one thing i'm against is there's no plan on ground and that's the problem we have in nigeria we have good intent but we don't have the wherewithal to cushion the effect of the good intent we have we would have first of all planned about where uh, 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 probably building refineries trying to get a uh, private sector into the oil uh, business before we eventually remove the subsidy so now what I'm trying to send is that it is not ripe for Nigeria to remove the fuel subsidy because we don't have uh, what it is to cushion the effects of it on the common man wow. thank you hey, how are you hey, thank you good it's so good to see you this morning yeah good to see you too. <laughs> so I just stopped you to talk to you this morning what's your name yeah I'm Joan you really look nice and your sporting outfit your hair everything give i just i give in give in say it again give in give in <laughs> all right so i want to talk to you this morning about you know the hardest thing about living in nigeria basically what is the hardest thing about living in nigeria it's a lot like everything is just somehow at this point yeah i mean let's not be ungrateful at some point it was good but right now it's like especially as a business person things are really not the way we expect like it just keeps switching up on you and you know at some point you won't even know what to do but then we still have to push mm. because you can't stay without trying so keep trying we move we move <laughs> it's so nice talking to you this morning thank you for giving us audience so this whole thing where they happen for nigeria they affect you at all yes ma'am mm. they affect me because things is not there as before uh, like before 
things they up now mm. everything you went to buy for market everything don't change mm. everything they costly this mm. way we are supposed to buy, uh, this way we are buy before like 350 450 mm -hmm. now everything they up mm. So if they ask you now, what be the hardest thing to where they happen for this country for you? What's the hardest thing for this country now where you know like how things had which part of the country had where well where you want to see change? Especially in Nigeria, everything they call uh, everything don't change. See fuel now, every uh, fuel don't go up. Immediately fuel go up, food food stop they increase. So that is why our own prayer would they pray may everything go down. May let us to enjoy the country. Mm. Tell us the things where you they sell for your table. I don't say I see fufu, I see uh, stew. What thing you they sell and you they make gain? So I they make gain at times because market you get a CB. At times you go get game. Sometimes you no go get game. Sometimes if you finish market you go get what you achieve for the market sometimes if markets not finish no go get anything mm -hmm. i'm selling rice and beans and yam porridge beans and swallow mm -hmm. eba mm -hmm. okay so if you want tell government one thing waiting be the message where you want government to hear what you want to make a change for this country i want government to talk to to help us we um, maybe they can physically talk to our president. May they help us. Let our things to go down. May everybody enjoy the country. Okay. Thank you. Amen to that. So good Thank morning, you. sir. Good morning. Thank you so much for giving us audience. So the situation in the country is it hitting you? Of course, it's hitting me so hard. Um, people like us that work in private firms, um, mm -hmm. actually, we most of our income go on, go on transport, mm -hmm. and um, we also have families out there. We pay school fees, we pay rent, and it's not really easy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the hike, the hike in transport fares has, has tripled, so it's really affecting us so badly. Mm -hmm. And um, a distance of say where you pay. Let's say 200, you are paying 500. Mm. I think the best way, what the government should do in order to ease this pain and tensions, that government should create palliatives. Mm. In, order, in order advanced countries, so, where transport should be made available, um, at least that one will ease the pains of people. Mm. Because by the time this I can, this I continues, automatically it is going to hit price of commodities. Of course. Yes, price of things will, will, will rise. And that one, the average is going to, it's going to affect the household. Mm. Even including those on the streets. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's going to, it's going to increase crime. Mm. Because people need to feed. I think that, that's just my little contribution. Wow. Yes. You've said a lot, sir. Yes. Um, I wanted to also ask you, if they were to ask you now to pick two hardest things about Nigeria, what would it be? Um, I would say... Oh, uh, I two. will say there are more than two. <laughs> um, price of commodities is one, and insecurity. Yeah. Uh, because life is very important. Mm -hmm. Insecurity and mm -hmm. uh, hiking price of things. Mm -hmm. Because um, you know the basic things of life is food, housing, and clothing. Mm -hmm. But this thing, uh, I will say that inadvertently not existing, uh, ex existing in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and they have, they, they, a lot of people are really, really affected. Mm -hmm. Like personally myself now. If I'm telling you that this morning I've not even eaten, oh. I'm not eating, I'm, and I'm going to work. Mm. So basically, one needs food mm -hmm. to keep life going. Mm -hmm. But if the food is not there, mm -hmm. you see a lot of people going to crime. Mm -hmm. That's why you hear people go to people's houses to see this pot of soup. Mm. Why? Because no food. Oh. And you see a lot of people sleeping under the under the bridge and uh, people sleeping in, in slums and all that mm -hmm. because no available uh, availability of uh, housing. Mm -hmm. Government is not making housing available. Hey guys, we're still on the streets of Abuja talking to people and just feeling the pulse of the nation so i have somebody here with me um he wants to tell us exactly how he feels given everything going on feral subsidy removal and everything just tell us how you feel at the moment 
First, let me start by saying my name is Mohamed Sani. With this issue of well of subsidy, first subsidy, yeah. what I can see, people are really facing challenges because someone, I know someone that traveled last week, mm -hmm. he traveled 8,000, but now coming back, they are telling him 15,000 wow. is the money to use and come back. So we don't know where to start. And even the government, mm -hmm. before they say this first subsidy, they should have said something. Maybe the Alwa and the, what do we call the minimum wage, they were saying they wanted to add. They could have added so we know we have something even though we are going to pay but at this stage you don't, did not pay the minimum and the what do we call it the minimum wage and people are still suffering and even the fuel you can't even get the fuel around you understand mm -hmm. you can't get the fuel around so, and now before with 2000 i think you can get 10 liters or two five but now as i'm talking to you if someone told me he bought eight liters around four thousand three you see it's too wow. much it's too much and now with this issue of what do we call it and uh, fuel subsidy before i was going to office it's going subsidy yeah over. going and coming i think i spent like 500 in a day but now as i'm talking to you going i'm going and i'm coming i have to spend like almost one five you see wow. it has if you had one major message to the government please look at the camera and say it please all i can say is they should just help the people they yeah. should just help the people people are suffering so please they should help people out and find solution for all the problems not even the fair subsidy any problem we are facing in the country they should just try and find a solution for us and help us out all thank you so much for talking to us it's been amazing have a wonderful day thank you